I came across critical realism about 10 years ago. I, I'd been working for about 30 years in um, practical social research, and I'd become more and more confused about differences between positivism and interpretivism. And um, one evening I went along to Roy's fortnightly sessions that he ran at our institute, and I was very intrigued. It actually took me about four years of attending Roy's seminars to feel I be was beginning to map out critical realism. And what really helped me was when Roy commissioned me to write the books about childhood and critical realism. Writing really does help to sort out the ideas. Sadly, Roy died in 2014. And as there was no one else around to do it, I carried on his course. We've changed it a great deal because at the time it was very philosophical and quite high flying. I'm a sociologist, so it's now much more about practical social research. How can we apply critical realism, particularly to um, writing a PhD? And we're involving master's students. Um, when I begin the course, I begin with the most basic idea in critical realism, perhaps, and quite simple, and yet it's also profound and confusing. And I think we couldn't spend um, a lifetime thinking about it. So I'm going to um, start my um, PowerPoint with um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> right with theory that critical realism's greatest strength and contribution. And theory means a way of looking and thinking. And theories open and close our vision. For instance, until the 1970s, um, everyone tended to be uh, racist and sexist. Many were eugenic, without really being aware that that was the theory driving their work. Um, it's most important then, and the most practical thing when we're starting research, to clarify our theories and our hidden assumptions. <clears throat> so the confusion was between positivism, which um, is the little icon of the detached objective scientist looking at the uh, uh, data, the object of research, isolated from its social context, um, tending to be objective, statistical, quantitative, to measure, evaluate, compare facts. Now, in health research, positivism is vital, for instance, in clinical trials, but it's not so useful in uh, social research and interactions. For that, interpretivism is so valuable. And um, the uh, little icon is of the hermeneutic relationship between the adult and child with their complex backgrounds as part of the scene, not the detached under the microscope approach. Hermeneutics or in interpretivism is um, how the adult might say to the child, oh, you poor needy child, I will give you food. And the child says, oh, thank you. Or the adult says to the child, you strong, resilient child, we'll solve problems together. And the child says, yes, we can. And so easily these interactive hermeneutic relationships are set up and become more and more powerful. And it's very important to see these uh, processes rather than the still object under the microscope. So the different kinds of interpretation, many kinds, including constructivism and postmodernism, they tend to be subjective, interactive, um, of course, interested in qualitative research, which describes. But the problem with them is when they may be relative and contingent and believe that things only matter and make sense within a context, not outside it. That becomes rather a contradiction when people publish international papers saying this because they assume their papers will make sense everywhere, even if they think that the um, participants' interviews may not. Um, it was a great relief then to come across critical realism and to see that these two important approaches, which their adherents tend to see as standalone, although they do combine, many do combine them. But critical realism helps to re <coughs> sorry, resolve contradictions and confusions and disagreements. It can connect opposing theories and methods 
and that increases the strength and validity of our work and its power and relevance to explain to explain as well as to measure and evaluate and compare and describe so i've put the little icon of the person thinking about how the bits of the jigsaw all fit together rather than contradict one another um, the example is watching falling objects like raindrops so that the empirical interpretive approach would be to look at our impressions of the many falling objects and the patterns between them and our sensations and images and evaluations and memories as we make sense of experiences uh, and that sort of stops there uh, positivists would go beyond that to accept that the, there really are independent raindrops separate from our view of them um, but they might say well why are the raindrops falling um, uh, is it in their motions or their patterns how many are falling when and how do they fall uh, and again it stops at the visible or the felt um, critical realism would go beyond this and say each of the two levels is so important they contribute together to the bigger picture if we want to know why raindrops are falling the causal mechanisms well why do they fall um, it's the unseen powerful force of gravity <clears throat> uh, and um, in health research for example um, uh, doctors don't just prescribe an aspirin if you say I've got this painful lump they begin to try to find out the hidden unseen cause um, <clears throat> and critical realism argues that this as health researchers and as social researchers we should be doing that too now the three levels um, for instance of cancer would be the empirical sense level when the a patient talks about their views and beliefs and experiences and the doctors observe the symptoms and record and measure and describe what's going on. The next level would be that med medicine accepts that there are actual people, actual symptoms, uh, treatments, interactions, events. And as health researchers, we have to accept that there are actual real bodies. And then critical realism would add, that we need to look at the unseen causal mechanisms such as the tumours, the causes of cancer and in social terms uh, health is so much affected by class, international inequalities, uh, political economies, by power, human rights, hope. These vital and valuable unseen levels which critical realism is so useful in helping us to explore. Uh, again, to um, make the point that um, the um, empirical level um, looks at um, the uh, interpretive, um, the actual level looks at the empirical and the actual, and the uh, critical realist level looks at all three and brings them together and then I ask the students to think about how their research addresses these three levels and to divide their um, page into three parts and start writing the different parts of their research and which levels they are working at and then I've um, added um, a few questions that you might like to think about and discuss on the three levels of so-called natural necessity. Thank you. So I could ask Priscilla if she could um, say a little bit more about what she's found perhaps to be key challenges or issues facing researchers who are new to critical realism and maybe um, give us some insight about um, how people are overcoming those in some ways perhaps. Is that okay Priscilla? Hi, uh, yes. Well, we've been doing the course uh, for now five years uh, since Roy died, and uh, we keep to his program. Uh, I, uh, it, I do 10 weeks, and uh, it's the same uh, topics that Roy did, and the same background readings and everything. Um, uh, one thing that has changed, though, is that hundreds of people have now attended that. I do crash course days as well. Um, and uh, with the help of all these people, 
we've really emphasized the application and more recently I've started doing activities so that in, in pairs everyone explains their PhD or their other research to each other and then they work on a topic like dividing their work into the empirical, actual and real. And I do hope that helps them to fix the ideas in their minds and transfer the theory of critical realism in, into the heart of their work. Um, I also emphasize that um, you don't need to know the whole of critical realism, um, who does, uh, to be able to apply it. Um, you might like to pick up one or two ideas, see how they go. Um, also, I think that it's strange, but people seem to find that idea of the uh, three levels of reality the hardest. And maybe Roy was right when he said, um, for two and a half thousand years, we've been encouraged not to look at the absent, the unseen, the unknown, the future indeed, which is really fascinating work. Um, I've done some work on utopian research and indeed all research really, in a way is utopian in that when we see any problems, we implicitly say, well, there should be some kind of alternative. Critical realism really opens the way to that. I just wondered if we could step back just a moment and, and if I could ask you, how did you find yourself going to critical realism in the first place? If you can uh, give us some, some thoughts on that, because I know that, that for many people, you know, they don't even get to critical realism. And if they do, it's kind of through circuitous routes. Um, I'm just wondering how you yourselves um, found your way to critical realism in the first place. Priscilla, perhaps we'll start with you. Hi. Um well, as I said, um, it was an amazing privilege and fortune that Roy was actually working in our institute and that I heard about him because not many people went to his courses. Few people in the whole of the institute knew about him, which was a terrible waste and loss. Um, and um, the other thing is that um, I uh, retired and when I started attending and I had lots of time to think about his work and to read it um, and I think that's why most of my colleagues uh, um, are, um, don't do critical realism quotes. Um, I think there are two big reasons. One is time. It does take uh, to rethink our work um, and think in different ways takes thought and discussion um, and reading. Uh, the other thing is, of course, that we have to say, oh, there are better ways of doing things than my last years or decades. And I find this really exciting to rethink how I would have done things so much better and so much more easily. And also, I'm quite pleased to look back over the 30 years and think, well, I was trying to do critical realism. Um, I wasn't trying to just be positivist, just interpretivist. I didn't know how to do it, though. I know it's such a pleasure to find out, mapped out clear ways to understand and explain what I was doing. Um, and I think it's very sad that um, in academia generally, there's huge demand from students and young researchers for critical realism. Um, but the sort of supply side, the more senior academics, there's a great um, loss in lots and lots of places, indifference, even hostility. Um, and I don't know how we're going to solve this problem apart from training lots and lots of people and like the best movements, working from the ground upwards rather than the top down.